Well, I want to extend each and every one of you a very warm and heartfelt welcome on this incredible occasion. Naturally, we wish you were all here in this very special place. But this is a unique opportunity to be gathered together around the world in this chapel. I wonder, as I was thinking about today, I was wondering if Thompson Webb, as he was putting the bricks on the walls here, if he ever dreamed that such an occasion would be possible where alumni around the world would be gathered in the chapel for the annual alumni chapel service. Let us join together with a prayer. Gracious God, we ask, we ask your blessing on our time together as we gather here to relive old memories and to remember good friends. These good friends, some of them who are no longer with us. We thank you for this special day and this special time in this very special place. Amen. Now we have a special treat, a reading from one of our Vivian Webb School alumna. Welcome to everyone joining today's chapel service from near and far. My name is Teresa Kanak, and I am a proud member of the Vivian Webb School class of 1996. Today's reading is about the idea of wisdom. What does it mean to be wise rather than just clever or smart or knowledgeable? The reading today comes from Barry Schwartz's book, Practical Wisdom. We need to appreciate that cultivating wisdom is not only good for society, but is, as Aristotle thought, a key to our own happiness. Wisdom isn't just something we ought to have, it's something we want to have to flourish. One, a wise person knows the proper aims of the activity she is engaged in. She wants to do the right thing to achieve these aims, wants to meet the needs of the people she is serving. Two, a wise person knows how to improvise, balancing conflicting aims and interpreting rules and principles in light of the particularities of each context. Three, a wise person is perceptive, knows how to read a social context and knows how to move beyond the black and white rules, black and white of rules, and see the gray in a situation. Four, a wise person knows how to take on the perspective of another, to see the situation as the other person does, and thus to understand how the other person feels. This perspective taking is what enables a wise person to feel empathy for others and to make decisions that serve the clients or students or patients or friends' needs. Five, a wise person knows how to make emotion an ally of reason, to rely on emotion to signal what a situation calls for and to inform judgment without distorting it. He can feel into it or just know what the right thing to do is, enabling him to act quickly when timing matters. His emotions and intuitions are well-educated. Six, a wise person is an experienced person. Practical wisdom is a craft and craftsmen are trained by having the right experiences. People learn how to be brave, said Aristotle, by doing brave things. So too with honesty, justice, loyalty, caring, listening, and counseling. A wise person is made, not born. Wisdom depends on experience and not just any experience. You need the time to get to know the people that you're serving. You need permission to be allowed to improvise, try new things, occasionally to fail and to learn from your failures. And you need to be mentored by wise teachers. It's a tradition each year to have a representative of the alumni classes from Webb School give part of the chapel talk. And I'd like to welcome Joe Thomas, I'm a member of the class of 1970, to come and share some thoughts. I am thrilled to be able to participate in this virtual chapel talk and share some of my memories 
of the class of 1970. 50 years ago, we lived in a country that seemed divided. There was a war in Vietnam. Assassination seemed to be the way to cancel out those with opposing beliefs. Our country was po polarized. Democrats were elitists who supported big spending. Republicans stood for patriotism, law and order, lower taxes, and war. We had elected a president who promised to end the Vietnam War, but instead continued its escalation. Summit Webb actively protested the war and many parents found out and questioned why the school allowed them to protest. The outside world was snaking its way onto the Webb campus and the school felt challenged to stop it. We all lived under what Headmaster Fred Hooper called a benevolent dictatorship and none of us liked that. In our junior year, much like the outside world, the class of 70 had split into two camps. When we elected our senior class president, we ended up electing two. You can't get more divided than that. Except we all shared a common goal. The class and its two presidents wanted to make campus life better. So they talked, listened to each other, and came up with a plan they hoped would make for positive change. The class, almost unanimously, voted to do away with senior privilege and started by opening the Alamo arches up to everyone. At that time, that was a big deal. Before our senior year began, we spent part of our summer digging trenches in the Alamo lawn for an automatic sprinkler system. The plan had worked. When we began our last year on campus, we all noticed a change. Our class was no longer split like before. We accepted and even grew to embrace our differences. It was amazing. We had seen the first men land on the moon and return again. And we said goodbye to the Beatles, though they really haven't disappeared. I won't even mention the stones. Some of us received a high draft number, while others got very low ones. Many of our class became ministers of the Universal Life Church, though it really didn't qualify us for a draft exemption. The Universal Life Church still exists and boasts a ministry that includes Conan O'Brien, Paul McCartney, Lady Gaga, and our own celebrity and winner of the Ken Colburn Award, Larry Ashton. Throughout our senior year, some of us test the limits of Fred Hooper's benevolent dictatorship. Two in our class crossed the invisible line and were asked to leave, while a whole bunch of us got a stern warning or two, or maybe lost a long weekend <clears throat> or their Thanksgiving break. Thank you, Fred. But we all carried on, mostly without incident. We learned how to survive within the written and unwritten rules of Webb. And by the spring of 1970, we had all announced our co colleges. We completed our senior projects and hiked up and down the Grand Canyon. We were prepared to take on the next chapter of our lives. We had made it and we were ready to move on to fulfill our moment in time and fix all the injustice and problems in our world, for we had high hopes. After 50 years, some of our hopes and dreams have changed, but I'm happy to say that most of our classes stayed active and connected. We can and do different opinion and beliefs, yet we still have the ability to listen trust and respect each other. We learned that at Webb. And now a special time in our annual chapel service where we remember those who are no longer with us. Let us bow for a moment of prayer. 
Oh Lord, we now take a moment to acknowledge the empty pew. As we recall these names, help us each in our own way to remember these special friends. Please continue to bless and comfort their friends and families. Amen. Now go in peace, live by faith, and may the grace of our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer be with you all this day and forevermore.